Joining me is Loz Kay, leader of the Pirate Party in the UK. Loz, thanks for speaking to RT. Now, you've been a prominent voice in the protests here against ACTA, but why do you oppose it? Surely you'll be stopping copyright infringement. Well, to start with, the ACTA treaty has become just another lightning rod for people's dissatisfaction and public anger about attempts to crack down on, on the Internet. Um, we've seen that recent, recently, for example, in the United States with the SOPA bill, and it cr caused a huge outcry because essentially it was draconian anti-Internet legislation. When it comes to talking about copyright infringement and intellectual property more broadly, um, one of the things that the entertainment industry would have us believe that there is some kind of cri crisis of piracy. Well, there is no crisis. The truth of the matter is that in the United States, more music was sold than ever before last year. Here in the United Kingdom, um, box office receipts hit uh, the billion pound mark for the first time. So there is no crisis. But surely something needs to be done here. Surely um, downloading music and videos for free isn't that copyright infringement? Shouldn't royalties go to the artist? Well, one of the, one of the things that's really interesting is that we're seeing how the free web is in fact pushing growth for, for artists. That we're seeing that the growth in music sales is being pushed by digital. It's being pushed by the fact that there is a free and open functioning web. Now, what we have to realise is that um, a copyright is a kind of law that's made for an entirely different set of circumstances. It's really not that controversial to say that it actually is no longer fit for purpose in the digital age. But isn't it the entertainment industry that's lobbying for, for actor? Surely artists are unhappy that their music's being pirated. Do you condone people downloading music for free then? One of the things that's really interesting is that the entertainment industry bodies, this very narrow group of lobbyists, has made this nice trick of saying that they represent artists. Really, they represent no one else other than their own narrow interests and actually trying to preserve business models um, that are frankly out of date. One of the real problems for artists is, um, is actually trying to, create, to, to respond to the new environment. So something like uh, streaming services, for example. Now, the, prob the problem is, is because of copyright terms, the, um, the, the large music bodies actually control basically the entire history rec of recorded popular music. This is in no way healthy. It means that it's actually very difficult to set up new innovative services. What we're really concerned about, one of the things that the actor will do, is actually make this more difficult because of the wording is so vague in it that it means, it means that actually it's going to be, be very hard to do proper due diligence legally setting up a new service. It's going to make it very difficult to find the next YouTube, the next Flickr, the next Facebook. These are the kind of things that, are, that our, our politicians are constantly praising in terms of, br of being, bringing growth and innovation. And uh, heaven knows we need that in Europe right now. But actually, this is going to be made more difficult and there are going to be fewer opportunities for artists. Do you not agree, though, intellectual property on the internet needs to be regulated and protected in some way? What we're saying in the Pirate Party is that um, agreements like ACTA have got it um, completely the wrong way round at the moment. This, this rush to ever more draconian enforcement is actually creating an incredible poisonous atmosphere at the moment. What instead, what we need to do is that we need to have an honest, open debate and say, how should this look like now? How do we rebalance the interests of artists, consumers and the wider economy? We need to be having that debate, but also it needs to happen in an open honest way. The problem is that the lobbyists have been controlling the game and doing things behind closed doors. Who's actually responsible for drawing up the agreement in the first place? One of the 
interesting things about ACTA is that it's actually very hard to see who's responsible for it. And that's one of the things that we've been objecting to all, all along. There are lists of people who've been at, at meetings and groups who have been party to meetings. Um, but, uh, but we can't know whether they've argued for or against or were just there to drink the coffee. Um, this has been symptomatic of the entire process because so much has been happened behind closed doors. The EU was supposedly involved in the drawing up of ACTA, but given that a key EU member state, Germany, is now stalling on signing the agreement, what does that say about the negotiations? The thing what's shown and what's constantly come up is that the comments um, from governments have been actually where we now have serious misgivings because actually once we're being, being really looking at the details that actually that we're as concerned as our citizens are. I think this also, I think what seems extraordinary that even parliaments um, are, 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 have felt that they've been left out of the loop and this is a serious failing in terms of the democratic debate. If ACTA is ratified and goes through, will it matter that key countries like China and Russia aren't part of it? One of the reasons why um, this treaty is in fact not really worth the paper it's written on is because Russia, China, India and Brazil are not part of the agreement and haven't been party to the negotiations. It's simply not credible to have any agreement which is supposedly about trade and not to have China or Russia in it. It's simply no longer acceptable for Western governments to negotiate a significant international agreement and just expect every, the rest of the world to, to join in and essentially like it or lump it. In particular, as it, as it has it also so huge implications for the developing world. Whose responsibility is it to regulate the internet then? Because ACTA seems to imply that it's everyone's, ISPs, users. What we've seen is that there's a narrative at the moment, uh, it's something that President Sarkozy is very fond of, of describing the internet as the Wild West, it's almost like this territory that needs to be civilised. What's happening at the moment is an incredibly um, unpleasant debate is beginning to rage and also frankly a lot of people are very angry at the moment. It feels like the internet is under siege. We've seen all sorts of different types of legislation and, and treaties like ACTA which essentially have the, have the potential to trample on people's fundamental rights to expression. A lot of that anger though from the protesters seems to be simply that they won't be able to download music and films for free now. What gives them the right to do that in the first place? It's a fundamental mistake to think that this extraordinary wave of protests right across Europe um, is just about wanting free stuff. That is to fundamentally misunderstand um, the nature of the protests at the moment. It's not about free stuff, it's about free people and free expression. That's what's sort of driving people out onto the streets. because. We're constantly told by governments, when it suits them, how important the internet is. For example, look, look how quick the Western governments have been to praise the use of social media in the Arab Spring. But suddenly, when it comes to home territory, they don't seem to be like, like to be uh, challenged. Now, what we've always been saying at the Pirate Party is that what it is, it's not simply about that it's about culture on this particular arena, it's about saying about what are the tools uh, that we're giving to our governments. That's what we need to be concerned about. We are giving our governments tools to censor the internet. However good intentions may be from some people, these are simply not the tools that we should be handing to our governments. And that is what the anger is about. That's, what bring, that's what's bringing people out, out on the streets in their hundreds of thousands across Europe. Why is Eastern Europe in particular the hotbed for these protests? 
it's been very striking that particularly Central and Eastern Europe have been um, have been leading the way in Europe on the on the issue of ACTA, and I think it's particularly this is that um, the people of Central and Eastern Europe have experienced what it means to have your freedom of expression taken from you, and I, to their credit, the people are uh, people are saying, if there is a danger to that, if there is a potential to a threat to that, um, we need to stand up, and I think it's been very inspiring. But also what we've seen is a real change in how politics is working now in the 21st century. That it's no longer Western Europe that necessarily leads all the time. That also Eastern Europe can show the way. And that also we can learn. And we should be ready to learn. Do you think the protesters are harming their own cause here by aligning themselves with groups such as Anonymous who have conducted a number of illegal hacks? One, one of the things is about, about the movement against ACTA is incredibly broad. Um, so it takes in, uh, takes in political groups, it takes in NGOs. I mean, it even, um, even now here in, in the United Kingdom, we're seeing uh, parties even like the United Kingdom Independence Party, who, who are a Eurosceptic party, beginning to speak out against ACTA. So there's a wide range of, a wide range of people. I don't think anyone said that there is some kind of formal alliance. Um, when you start to push for draconian legislation, people will push back. And particularly if it feels that there is no proper democratic outlet, um, then people do will grasp for direct action. It's vital that governments start listening to, to voices on internet freedom and to the real grassroots. Otherwise, simply people will be alienated. And that's hugely dangerous. Loz Kay, thank you. Thank you.